you or someone you know has high blood pressure or cardiovascular disease related risk factors, I think you'll like knowing about this novel study finding that habitual exercise releases a peptide in the blood that travels to the heart and prevents some of the pathologic remodeling that is linked with heart failure. Now, this is important on a lot of different levels. Uh, the primary number one reason is that heart disease is the leading cause of mortality here in the U.S. and also throughout the globe. We've reviewed the CDC data over the past several years, finding that 640 up to 693,000 people here in the U.S. die from heart failure and cardiovascular disease every single year. We also know that many people have low LDL cholesterol levels and they still end up in the ICU or the ER from heart failure or you know, heart disease, and some of those people die. So this link between LDL cholesterol uh, lowering and outcomes, the data is not so solid. So we should sort of expand our horizon and focus on other strategies, therapeutic wellness options that we can implement in our life to reduce the odds that we will die from the leading cause of death, and that is heart failure. So really important that we talk about this. And in short, what this paper found, and the title of the paper here is Exercise-Derived Peptide Protects Against Pathologic Cardiac Remodeling. This was published in part of, of Lancet's Discovery Science Journals. This is hot off the press. It was just an early release here on the 14th of July. I think it's really fascinating because this is not just a tissue culture study, although they did use tissue cultures in this metabolomic analysis to discover this novel peptide called CCDC80. And they used a the tissue culture from human cells. They um, had animal models as part of that. And then at the end of the study, they recruited subjects that habitually exercise and they had for 12 weeks or more. And they had them exercise in the lab and then they drew their blood and figured out that, gosh, this peptide that was you know sort of found in tissue culture and then corroborated in animal model studies and then was increased in humans when they exercise, it goes to the heart and it prevents two things that are known to be pathologic within the heart. And that is, um, of course, the, the pathology that is linked with heart failure. And that is left ventricular hypertrophy, LVH. So this is common for with people that have congestive heart failure, heart disease and congestive heart failure and things like that. The left ventricle becomes hypertrophied and that compromises and lowers their ejection fraction. So they're circulating less blood. They get peripheral vascular disease as a complication associated with that and potentially increasing their risk for strokes and, card uh, and cerebrovascular disease, uh, dementia, and all these uh, complications, right? So again, the peptide is being released either directly from the muscle or as a result of the muscular contractions. It goes to the, the myocytes, the heart cells, and prevents that pathologic remodeling. Really, really important stuff. I, I want to continue and dive into the details and share with you these images of these blood samples of humans and talk about the implications here. Implications for people that are on medically managed high blood pressure. Now, this is important because blood pressure lowering medications, particularly beta blockers, compromise athletic performance. I've had several clients over the years who... You know, they had a just a uh, an annual physical. They go to the doctor, and they were told that they're hypertensive, and so they're put on a beta blocker. They're put on uh, a thiazide diuretic, for example. And those some of those, you know, particularly the older classes of blood pressure lowering medications, they they compromise athletic performance. They cause people to feel lightheaded and dizzy. You know, these are people that used to love to go to the gym or used to love to hike, and now they can no longer do that. So. We're kind of robbing Peter to pay Paul, especially knowing that exercise, particularly regular, consistent exercise, three to four days per week, causes this exercise-induced increase in this novel peptide that protects the heart and prevents the remodeling that is linked with the pathology, that is linked with heart failure. So that's big point number one. Big point number two, the lipid-lowering medications. So if you go to the doctor and your LDL cholesterol is over 130 uh, milligrams per DL, then your doctor's gonna say, hey, Sally, hey, Ken, we need, to, we need to bring down your LDL cholesterol because of course cholesterol is a reason why you're at risk for heart disease, even though we now know that many people that end up in the emergency room or ICU and have a cardiovascular-related event, some half of those people have low or normal cholesterol levels. So again, we gotta broaden the horizon and focus more on on exercise and other factors like circadian rhythms and feeding fasting window compression and so forth because lipid lowering medications particularly the class of medications known as statins they cause muscular dysfunction they weaken 
and, and compromise athletic performance. This is why many individuals that have high cholesterol levels, if they play professional sports, i.e. Def, you know, offensive or defensive linemen in the NFL, they do not want to take a statin because they know that it compromises their athletic performance. So you might have someone that's, that has a double whammy. They're put on a, a beta blocker and a statin, and they used to love to work out. Now they can't, or they're weak, they're lightheaded, they're dizzy. So their recreational exercise goes down. And so we wonder why then, even though many more people are medically managed on you know, cardiovascular-related uh, pharmacologic regimens, we still have the heart disease is still the number one leading cause of mortality. So again, we got to focus on the root cause. And if the root cause of heart failure is this pathologic remodeling of the heart, and if it turns out that exercise increases to a significant degree, this novel peptide, the CCDC80, that can ameliorate or reverse these changes, why are we giving people medications that compromise their athleticism and compromise and, and, and you know prevent them from recreationally exercising? So before we continue on, friends, we're going to take a deep dive into this paper and another one that I think you'll find is quite fascinating, all related to cardiovascular risk reduction and uh, preventing heart failure. But first, I just want to thank you for being here. Thank you for hitting that like button. If you're enjoying this content, what I'll do is I'll put links to the actual articles that we're talking about below so you can share those articles and share this video with a friend who might have high blood pressure or might have been told by their doctor that they're at risk for heart disease. We want to help people... Uh, reduce their risk of all sorts of diseases, namely heart disease as well. Uh, also, friends, exercise is super important. It's a big part of my life, and it should be a big part of your life as well. So that's why we created the Novel Electrolyte Sticks. We know that it's summertime right now, at least in North America. If you're watching this in North America, it's hot, you're sweating, and you want to go to the gym and have a good workout. So staying hydrated, when you take electrolytes with real salt and magnesium and all these different things. You can actually increase your blood volume. You can uh, have a better workout. But what is unique about the electrolyte sticks is not only are you getting your electrolytes, but you're getting creatine and taurine. Those two nutrients are synergistic. They're electrolytes. Uh, taurine is concentrated in the heart. These are all great things that can improve athletic performance and recovery. So you can save over at myoscience.com. You can use the coupon code podcast to save. We have the orange flavor and also the lemon lime flavor. If you buy two, you get the second one half off. So that uh, promotion ends on the 15th of August. So I'll put links below there. You can read some of the, uh, of the reviews. There's 235 reviews. People like you who are health oriented are using the product before the exercise, during their exercise or, or during their sauna session and getting great benefits. So check out some of those reviews and use the coupon code podcast to save. Let's really take a deep dive into this paper. I know you like the, the nerdy details as much as I do. The scientists say, our work reveals a mechanism of exercise conferred protection against hypertensive cardiac remodeling. Again, the two futures uh, associated with heart failure, the remodeling futures, are the left ventricular hypertrophy, LVH, and then the diastolic dysfunction. And this novel peptide, CCD80, uh, is a cardioprotective molecule that ameliorates the angiotensin II cardiac remodeling. So sort of the pathophysiology here is people have circadian rhythm dysfunction, they have sleep apnea, they don't exercise enough, they overeat, they start to get high blood pressure, and the angiotensin II causes remodeling, you know, pathologic remodeling within the heart, and that can predispose people to having overt heart failure, sudden cardiac death, and dying of heart disease. And so uh, the scientists say, our study provides novel insights into understanding the mechanisms underlying exercise afforded protection against pathologic cardiac remodeling. And so, again, there's three sort of branches of this study, which is why I think it's quite interesting. There's the tissue culture model aspect of this that looked at exercised cells and wanted to do this metabolomic analysis to see what peptides are increased when myocytes are exercised, for example. And they kept finding through these genomic sequencing and metabolomic analysis that this peptide CCDC80 was increased. Then they had animal models do exercise and they found a similar significant increase in this peptide. Then they had human subjects split, you know, 10 uh, males and 10 females who had habitually exercised. They brought them into the lab and they did a fasting analysis and then did a post-exercise analysis. And guess what? This same peptide was shown to be increased. And again, this peptide has been shown previously uh, to prevent the remodeling within the heart that is linked with heart failure. So it ameliorated that. 
Okay. So we have a, a lot of, I think, big implications. The scientists want to say our data suggests that the amount of CCD C80 in skeletal muscle is increased after three months of swimming exercises. Um, and meanwhile, the literature suggests that CCD80 transcription is increased after 12 weeks of training. So it's important. You know, I know a lot of people who just, they do a 10K randomly. Or they'll do, a, you know, they'll train for a Labor Day marathon. Then they won't train or won't exercise for the rest of the year. It's habitual exercise that we want to focus on. So find a time of day that works for you to regularly get out and exercise. I recommend middle part of the day. You know, if that works for you, break up the work day, get some sun in your eyes, help support, you know, deep sleep later in the day, entrain that circadian clock system. Exercise in the morning is helpful as well. So just figure out a time when you can habitually commit to this. So really, really important stuff. Okay, now, um, I think it's also important because as we talked about before, doctors are focused so much on lowering lipids, but the medications frequently used to lower those lipids compromise athletic performance. And that's not good. Like, as I said before, it's like, you know, robbing Peter to pay Paul, right? You're lowering someone's lipids, but then you're causing them to not exercise. And if we now know that exercise has these independent effects by releasing these extracellular vesicles with protein in them that go to the heart and protect the heart muscle, that's not a good thing. Uh, the same thing happens when it comes to medically managing people with high blood pressure. Uh, as I've said earlier, we I've had many clients over the years who have had like say a heart attack or uh, you know just they, they were told they had high blood pressure. So they were given beta blockers uh, and they can no longer, they no longer enjoy exercise. So that's not good. So work with your doctor on changing the medication. You know, for example, if you're on a beta blocker or a thiazide diuretic or a statin, say, hey, look, can I, can we look at other medications? You can talk to your doctor about a calcium channel blocker. This is a, a class of medication that doesn't have these, you know, compromises in exercise performance. You can talk to your doctor maybe about doing a, a ACE2 inhibitor. If, as long as you don't develop a cough, that could be a, a, a natural, a, a better substitute as opposed to a beta blocker. Um, so that's really important there. Um, and then, uh, of course, we know that the people with low lipid levels still die from heart failure. So there's something more going on here. Um, and just focusing on a diet to lower lipid levels is not necessarily improving the release of these extracellular vesicles that contain this novel peptide that has been shown to go to the heart and prevent the pathology within the heart. So uh, really, really important stuff. Now, I think it's important to understand because as the scientists go on this to say, they say hypertensive cardiac hypertrophy is the leading cause of cardiac remodeling leading to heart failure. However, treatment and prevention strategies are still limited. Um, there, there's other medications too, like amiodarone and, and these things that have a ton of side effects uh, for people that, that have had an event. Uh, and so if we can prevent an event by getting out in front of this and encouraging people to walk, especially after they eat meals, to lift weights three to four days per week, it's very helpful. Um, and again, what's unique here, and, and this may be where pharmacology goes down the road is looking at these peptides because they say these peptides like CCDC80 are highly selective, efficacious, and safe and well tolerated. And so I think it's important to understand that, you know, a unique aspects, a unique aspect of drug research is they're investing a lot of money in these high throughput metabolomic studies to figure out the mechanisms. And then they're trying to like reverse engineer a peptide that your body would naturally release. But instead of wait 34 years for that to be approved by the FDA, what you can do right now is implement, you know, natural things that can increase these peptides, like going for a walk or going for a hike or going for a swim or going to stand up paddleboarding, right? All going for a hike, you know, all these things can be helpful. So um, in conclusion, our study indicates that CCDC80 uh, may be a potential therapeutic agent for treating hypertensive cardiac remodeling, which is driving heart failure and deaths from heart disease. So again, the take home here, very simple friends. Don't take medications that compromise your athletic performance. Don't do things that, that prevent you from exercising. You need to habitually exercise if you don't want to succumb to the uh, most probable way that you will die. And that is heart disease, right? So exercise it's not just about burning fat. It's not just about burning calories. It's about preventing and improving the health of your heart. So spread this message, help people that you know, that you care about in your life, better understand ways uh, about how their body works so that they can sort of change their habits 
in for the better. They can start regularly exercising and help to uh, live longer, more productive, healthier lives. So I think this stuff is funny. We're going to talk a lot more about exerkinds in the future. Uh, I'll just give you a hint at where we're going to go uh, next week. Uh, great review paper here titled Exerkinds in Health, Resilience, and Disease. And so there's a lot of biomolecules that are released when we exercise this novel peptide that we talked about today, CCDC80. It's just one of many peptides when we exercise that go around to our fat cells, that go around to our muscle, to our liver, to our brain, and change uh, genetic expression, turn genes on, turn genes off, uh, increase or decrease enzymes uh, and longevity associated pathways. So get out there and get moving, move those muscles. I encourage you to do that. And as always, friends, thanks for sharing this video. Thank you for hitting that like button. Thank you for subscribing. And we'll catch you in a future episode down the road. Have a great day. Bye now. Yeah.